Well, you can hardly see the mountain today for the smoke. There's that many fires going on around here. Temperatures up probably close to 30 degrees, which is pretty high for these guys. And uh, yeah, the predicting rain, but oh gee, I don't know, I don't like their chances. We just gotta hope and pray that uh, they get a good fall sooner rather than later. All good, still beautiful. Black bear and grizzly bear kicking around here, and mule deer, elk, porcupine, yeah, everything. A few um, signs of coyote, coyote, kicking around the fields. Uh, all good. Just like to uh, thank everybody for tuning in, and uh, as I can, we'll be starting to put a lot more footage onto our private site and uh, we're going to really make this something special for the people that get behind us. So uh, yeah, great to have you on the journey. Okay, there's a team of us out on the side of the hill here now. There's been three sheep killed, possibly four, in the last couple of nights. And uh, the young lass that owns the sheep, uh, she thought it was a bear for a start, but there's no bear sign, so they think it's a cougar. I think it's a mountain lion. So we're in here looking around. I found the gut here. This is the rumen of the sheep, but we can't find the rest of the carcass. It's brought it down through here. They've gone ahead now with two dogs. Two dogs and a rifle. With a bit of luck, we'll pick up a scent. We might be able to tree this, this mount line. Let's see. Baying again, just in front of me. I think this cat has gone to the water. The dogs are definitely on the something. Down there in the thick scrub. It was one heck of a chase, but I think we'd give that uh, we'll give that round to the cougar. I think uh, I think he hit the water and straight across. Even though they say cats don't swim, I think that guy went straight off that rocky bar. And that's why the dogs went right to the water, and uh, I think he's gone straight across the narrow point. This spot here, this interests me. We've got a, a little spring here, a little soaky gully. A nice track that sort of joins the two sections of the open country over here to the canyon on this side. 
It's just the thought that something might come through here. There's a little bit of scat there. It could be a fox or a coyote. They've got these traps set pretty high, so a fox should not get themselves caught in it. And I don't want to because it's not, you know, not what I want to do, catch any of the foxes around here. Uh, but a coyote, yeah, it'd be good. And what I'll do is I'll try a scent up here somewhere. And I'll put a, uh, a trap just in that leaf litter, just off to one side so we can get through here with the buggy. Uh, yeah, sort of thinking there, uh, overhead scent to get them to think about it. And maybe then a more directional scent over here to get them to come in. I think I might just tie off on the base of that tree, short chain, trap in there somewhere. Let's try it. Rightio, so I've got a, a bridge of three set here just in this pine litter, which is just, it's just like a very fine, like uh, pine needles and just trash. Very soft ground, like it's, it's like foam, it's, it's spongy. So I've set it in there, made it the same, simple stepping stick. I've got a brush, another stick to one side. I've put a, uh, a little wad of lint up here with uh, beaver blood on it, soaked on it. I put it on top of a bag here and soaked it in there. Put it up there as a high, long distance lure, right? But the stick I used to mix it all up with, it's got a bit on the bottom and I've put it down the bottom here just as a little peg. Something if they're sniffing that, they come round, put their nose there as well. To put their nose on it, even a wolf is going to have to put its foot there, in between that. Hopefully no cattle will come through and wrap it. Okay, I've set a um, Bridger 3 in here. I haven't set the chain yet. I'm just putting the drag over here and I'll put it around one of those trees. Um, with the thought the animal gets caught, just wraps quickly around the tree. Uh, traps in here, natural root of a tree. I'm going to use this little stick sticking out here as something that I'll just dab some of this gland lure on the end of it. Won't get much, just a little, little bit of it there, right? A little bit on that end. So what I want is an animal to come along here, smell that, and come in, put their nose on it. Now, they'll either put a foot there as they sniff it, or I think as they sniff it, they'll walk past. What I will do is I'll put a bush or a bit of brush here. Okay, so it just makes it so they can't stand there and sniff it. They've actually got to come through here to sniff it. And they either walk in, they back out. Well, okay, they could do that. Or if they walk in, sniff it and walk through, that's a natural place for them to put their foot right there. A bit of brush here, they're not going to step there. Probably not going to step under that. A little bit of brush there. We've got some wolf tracks coming along this fence line here. So let's say they, they do the same thing again. They come down through here. The wind predominantly south southeast, so it's bringing them come across this way. I think I'll put a set of um, set of beaver clackers up here in this tree, up in this little willow high. This is sort of then the natural approach. If something's coming around here to get at it, they're gonna come and walk in here. So I'm thinking, trap right there. Let's put it in on a drag, see what happens.
Well, good morning team. Um, this is the second day of elk season over here in British Columbia. Uh, I haven't got a tag. Uh, I can't get a tag as a non-resident, but I can film. Uh, I'm carrying a rifle. I'm carrying Esther's 3006 because this is the sort of place where there's plenty of big swallowmies, big biteys. Uh, there's a grizzly bear kicking around here that's got a few people worried. He's killed a couple of sheep next door, only a kilometre away from home. So I'm carrying a rifle. What I would like to do today is try and get some video footage of some of these elk. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's go up here and see what we can find. There's no bugling at the moment and a lot of this bush here is just so thick at the moment, it's incredible. But um, we did see a couple of Falkhorn uh, mule deer bucks there before, which was great. And uh, yeah, with a bit of luck, we uh, we might see something else this morning. But it's just good just to be out here in the bush. Um, Kurt on the other side of the valley here. Uh, I'll try and meet up with him when we get up the top of this hill. And uh, yeah, having a great time. Things just happen quickly then. A pack of wolves, at least five wolves coming out here in front of me. I've taken two quick shots. And uh, with a gun I've never fired before, left hand. I think I've nailed one. I think I've got one down. I'm not sure of the second one. I think I've connected. Yep. First one down. First wolf down. Well, that's the first for me. First chance I've ever had at a wolf. Very quick, just coming out. They come out in underneath me just like a rocket. My wind was drifting down the valley, so I think I picked up a scent. Came round. I was just looking at a couple little, couple little bucks there, a couple of little muley bucks, taking video. And the next thing, here's five wolves coming out to, to a quick shot and down. Let's see. And look at the dentures on that, fellas. <laughs> One happy lad, my first wolf, calf killer, right down in amongst their calves. Right, all you dingo trappers, look at that for a set of dentures. Big dog. Now this is a little bit different to taking the dingo scalp. I'm taking the uh, the full skin off this wolf. Beautiful pelt. And over here they tube them. They just cut them down the back legs through the middle, down the front legs to just short of the center, and then strip them right off as a, as a tube. Uh, so it's a little bit different, but uh, yeah, it's not that hard. We'll just take our time and we'll end up with a lovely skin, hopefully. A little bit of damage up around the spine. I hit a little bit high. I was using Esther's 3006 Winchester 700, um, and it's a left hand model. So uh, I just held it a little bit 
awkwardly as I fired and I knew I was a little bit high, higher than what I wanted on the body, but then I still took out the, just under the spine. This one went straight down. There was no messing around. It was down and out. Unfortunately, the second one, I, uh, I took the shot and it was, just, it was on the run. I know as I squeezed off, I was right on the back line, so I would have gone over the top on it, unfortunately. Well, I'm just sitting here back in Aussie editing this footage that uh, I took when I uh, shot that wolf in British Columbia, I'm trying to finish off this uh, clip to go on for next week. And uh, it brought back some good mem memories there. Now, for me, it was a great personal achievement to go basically one-on-one -on -one out there in the bush with the wolves, with my rifle. You know, I was hunting. Um, Pure and simple, stalking through the bush, and I managed to take uh, a, a beautiful wolf. Now, I had a snapshot at the second one, about 180 metres on the run. Um, it didn't feel right as I fired. I rode back through that area about two weeks later when we were um, uh, looking for cattle because we were a heifer and a calf short. I think the wolves had probably cleaned them up. I uh, rode back through that area and guess what, probably no more than 100 metres from where the second wolf was when I shot at it, there it was. Uh, so I had hit it, it didn't bleed. It didn't bleed where I went, where I last saw it, it hadn't bled. Went about 100 metres and it was too far gone to even film. So, uh, a bit unfortunate, but uh, I took two dogs, two wolves out of that pack. Now, I didn't realise then just what an effect that was going to have on those wolves. They literally left town. Uh, and it wasn't for quite a while before they came back. So in the next couple of clips, I will uh, I'll show you that the, the extra footage that we have, uh, trail cam camera footage and that sort of stuff. But there's a lot of people out there that will see me as just this most terrible person for shooting a wolf or shooting a couple of wolves and that they should be left alone and the alpha predator or all that rah 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 we're going to see it in the comments so i tell you everybody watch the comments you're going to see that but the truth is actually far more complicated than what some people would have you believe now i've talked with a lot of guides up there a lot of hunters from that country landowners and a couple of guys in particular, the Collingwood brothers that have been in that Spatsizi area for you know, 50 something years guiding, they have seen the improvements and now they're starting to see the disasters uh, of simply too many wolves and too many bears. So I'll try in the next couple of weeks to put up some of those, that footage um, of Reggie and I and Ray and I and uh, I'll put those clips up on both on this uh, YouTube channel and on our Patreon channel. The longer clips I think I'll put on our Patreon channel. So if you'd like to um, to see those, uh, go across there. You can join up for free. Uh, if you feel like donating to the cause, we'd really appreciate it. We certainly appreciate everything that, that's sent our way. But uh, go and check it out. That's uh, the Clark McGee's Patreon, the Clark McGee's Campfire. So, uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you there. All the best.